cooperation projects that stem out from this research. For example, uh, a year ago I got um, contacted by a, a German researcher who designs fish passes. And the problem with fish passes is that most of them don't work. They simply don't work. I, I've heard 90% of them don't work or are only partially working. And they don't know why. There's no sort of uh, methodology to say this fish pass is going to work and that one is not going to work. And now we probably got a bonus project ac accepted because we got really hard marks for it. If they don't give us money, I was mother them with my personal pillow and just we have to get this money. But, <laughs> <laughs> but the idea is to take a fish robot and put it in a fish pass to perceive what the fish actually feels where it's inside of the pass. And what's from this feeling, whether there is a difference between functioning and non-functioning passes. And then we could model this using approximately the same methods that Tarmo is using for modeling big volumes of water. And uh, to, to tell before they build the pass whether it's going to be functional or it's not going to be functional. Um, yeah, that's interesting. Uh, another interesting uh, uh, idea is that came from veterinaries I never thought about myself because I'm not a biologist. I gave a talk, oh, they, they invited me to give a plenary on um, Congress of Laboratory Animal Science. I got really scared first because I thought they're going to stick electrodes in me. <laughs> <laughs> then I understood, I'm not the animal, I'm the speaker, right? <laughs> and, and then I understood what interests them, actually. So the whole research in laboratory animal science essentially is not to use animals. It's funny, but actually they want to replace animals or minimize suffering and minimize losses and minimize costs. And one way to do would be using robots. So they got really interested in the research, what we're doing here in order to re replace an, uh, laboratory animals with robots. Actually, what we brought uh, with this project was that we can really say if we put this robot in the water, what would a fish perceive if it was in water? It is much easier to work with. Fish have two problems. First problem is that they don't talk. The other problem is they don't listen to you either. So you can't tell the fish, go there or do that or something. It doesn't give a damn. But with a robot, you can perfectly control it and say, if you're in this place, you're doing that thing. This is the things that you perceive. Does the fish do something with this information or not? We don't know. But biologists would say you that animals are all the information available and they blend it with other senses. So it's a very valuable software information also, not for people who want to build technology, but also people who want to understand nature, how animals live and how animals have developed. Uh, is there anything else? Uh, do you have any questions? I'm afraid that, uh, so, yeah. Yeah, since you start your research with this kind of robot fish, yeah. Did you stop eating fish or you keep on keep up eating fish? I mean I do eat a lot of fish. But <laughs> I, I really when you know when you have the salmon on your plate you really have to treat it with respect. <laughs> it's it's an unbelievably clever animal. It's uh, it's one thing that I've understood, you know, how oblivious we are because we don't have this six or seven cents and we don't understand what fish is actually capable of doing now and know what it's capable of doing. So fish can teach a lot of uh, a lot of fish to us, right? Absolutely, absolutely. It's a, I, I think it's similar, you know, when we discovered ultrasound or or, or radioactivity or something. Oh, there is a phenomenon but we didn't know about it because we didn't have sensors. And now we have sensors and we can see, oh, there is, you know, a, a new thing. And for underwater technology, I think if you, uh, if you put an underwater robot in a, in a flow without flow sensors, it's about like bringing a blind man to a movie theater. Mm -hmm. I mean, you understand some things, or you know, sound, and you maybe understand the plot, but mm -hmm. probably miss the whole entertainment. So. <laughs> yeah. Does it send information uh, via satellite, or you gather it afterwards, or how do you...? Uh, it depends. This one is tethered, you know, we have a cable here, so right, you can do it online. Uh, when you send an underwater robot underwater, so there is one main problem. Water is basically opaque to electromagnetic radiation. Right. You can't send anything over, just, you know, salt, peep, 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 
something like that. It's a right. really, really low bandwidth. Right. And it's not just problem with sending lateral lines, sending data of water. You can't send videos, you can't send anything just right. because of the physics of the medium. Correct. Right. So, so, so if this were eventually out in the open sea, how would you use do with that telemetry? I mean, would you link it to satellites if you want to? What, what underwater data? robots do, they uh, once in a while they surface. So, yeah. And since they send data over, and they also get the GPS coordinates to calibrate the Correct. navigation. So that's what you would do? Yeah, okay. yes, that's what I would do. Yeah. Do you call it just Robofish or you have a name like me? Filosa. It says the project name was Filosa. It stands for Fish Locomotion and Sensing. You can also Google it out. Perfect. And this is why we call it a Filosa fish. Mm -hmm. uh, how does that apply to ships? So is the zero energy vessel coming huh. That's a really clever idea, you know. <laughs> yes. I think so. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. There is a lot to gain also if you, you don't have to use the sensors on a fish robot. You could use it on boats or ships or something mm -hmm. similar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There are some publications about uh -huh. this project. That's on our web page. Everything is on our web page. Yeah. Did you ever work with the MIT guys who were working on the robot for a few years ago? Uh, which ones? Uh, the robot unit, yeah. yeah. Robot yeah. unit. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. So started in '93, as right. the project. It's a, it's one of the first pyromimetic robots, but they didn't work on, on on flow sensors. Now they do. They also work on on seal whiskers. I've heard. Do they? I've uh -huh. seen uh -huh. few publications yeah. about that. So. But we're not worried. We're so much better. <laughs> <laughs> How many people work with you? Uh, on this project in the center we have about 15 people and it's shrinking or expanding depending on the cash flow on this and project. And Now, we don't have biologists, our, uh, our business model is to be really cooperative. So we have a lot of inter international projects. Right now we have four parallel uh, seven framework projects in Europe. Mm -hmm. And all these other competencies we're getting from elsewhere. For this project, we worked with biologists from Pass University from UK. Mm -hmm. And all the biology knowledge came from there. So we don't try to do everything ourselves. We're good at experimental fluid type mechanics and biorobotics, and this is what we want to stick at. So if they, if they have this much hidden intelligence and they're so sensitive, we might have second thoughts about eating that. Yeah. Because they might be really suffering without us knowing that. You know, it's a, it's a very interesting question. It's the same thing with this laboratory in Animal Science Conference. A Norwegian scientist came to me. And it appears that the basic laboratory animal in Norway is a fish. And they're really concerned about well-being of fishes. And I kind of... It's, it's a little... Strange for me at the same time where so many people in the world are suffering to be really concerned whether your fish in a tank gets bored or not. <laughs> but this is really is their concern. And he came to me later on and said, you open our eyes. We've designed our fish tanks completely in the wrong way. Because what we do, we just have uniform flow, which means, as you have shown, there are no any stimuli. And they don't get stimulated, they get bored. And we should put, you know, with these periodic vortices here or there and the interesting flow patterns, they have something to play with. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and on the one hand, I think it's a ridiculous problem. And on the other hand, you're right. I mean, we just don't understand other animals because we're so ignorant. So I think in the end of the day, he's right. <laughs> yeah. But I'm still eating fish. <laughs> can you look at uh, the fish like from down so that we can take your photo looking at the fish? Or can you raise oh, yeah. it? Or can Only you either? Um, it's heavy. <laughs> so, the plate is heavy. Really. Maybe you can like look at the fish or something. You no, know, yeah. I have I have really many uh, photos. I, I have very many good-looking guys in my lab, oh. and these are people who actually built this stuff. I'm just doing talking, so perhaps you can invite them. Rasmus, kus kõik kon? Kutsu Davi ja Kert ja kõik siia kole. In the meantime, can you look at the, your fish? In the meantime, yes. like you're looking at it with a lot of love. Is your baby? <laughs> your baby. There. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, I mean, my, my colleague is not. Oh, yeah. See, 
two guys, oh, three guys, say so you're actually, say so you're the heroes, I'm not, okay. come here. Yeah. All right. Yeah. A genius. Yeah. Do we have a picture? I just, you know, stand there and smile. <laughs> With the fish. You don't bite. With the fish. No. With the um, fish. Yeah, take the fish too. That's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing. Can, can I talk while you're taking pictures? Yes, Actually, yeah. Tavi, who Could feels you mainly... hold the fish? Because yeah. you have different yeah. color. Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. so, the guy who hold, is holding the fish, he's actually so, the main person who builds this one, but now he's engaged in another project which kind of stems from this one. So uh, we, he's designing a vehicle for underwater archaeology to, that uh, goes inside shipwrecks. And it's actually, just can you click on the computer screen? <coughs> this is the design, we haven't built it yet, but if you can see it has this, um, it doesn't have propellers either, it has this hydrofoils, what we call it. So it's kind of a turtle, more like turtle inspired. And the idea with this uh, robot is that it can go to nearly narrow species inside shipwrecks where divers, for example, even don't want to go because it's too dangerous. And it's very maneuverable. It can turn on spot, turn upside down to whatever, or stay, hover on place. And then it can take um, a, a photogrammetry data and bring it, bring it up to the archaeologist. And uh, this vehicle should be ready for when? Next year? Uh, Next this year? February. February, yeah. So we take it for field testing probably somewhere next year. What's your first study? Uh, your first study to uh, biology? Is first now, study? now I'm a computer engineer computer by engineer background. Yeah. background. Yeah. So that's what we normally. Tavi is a mechanical engineer, mechanical and engineer. Gert is a physicist, and Yaz yeah. is a physicist. Oh, so we so have our physics. background in either engineering or physics. Now how many biologists? Or about that? We don't have any. We any. cooperate with the world's best. Ah, yes. <laughs> Uh, dear Maria, yeah. we have now uh, half an hour just to eat and uh -huh. go, and after that we need to leave the sky. Sorry. Yeah, sure, absolutely. So, thank you. Very but thank you can you. all ask questions different yeah. because we are going to eat fish during the lunch. <laughs> <laughs> thank you.